Hello, Dan Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about foods that reportedly increase or decrease your risk of cancer. So when one of these stories comes about, what it does is create a, a media frenzy. Cancer is a horrific and very common disease. So if someone told you that eating a certain food increases your risk of cancer, it's quite common for people to panic. When a news station reports it, they will often put their own twist on a study, often presenting misinformation. People will listen to that and hear that. They will misinterpret it or relay it somehow, and it kind of turns into a game of, a game of Chinese whispers. The end result is that certain foods get demonised or sometimes idolised as being um, particularly um, damaging in terms of um, cancer risk or particularly um, helpful in terms of cancer risk, I hear they have a protective effect. Now the goal of this video is to put this into perspective because I don't like it when people freak out about things that they don't need to freak out about. I've done the same thing in the past, I'm sure I'll do the same thing in the future. Um, so next time one of these stories comes up I want you to remember this video and share it among your friends. There's one piece of research which summarises this entire topic very, very well. So I'm going to talk you through it. What the researchers did was opened up a recipe book and picked out 50 ingredients at random out of the recipe book. Then what they did was looked for any available research on each ingredient with relation to cancer risk. Out of the 50 ingredients they looked at, 80% had available research on cancer risk for that specific ingredient, many of which will have multiple papers for each ingredient. So they put all of the papers together when there are multiples of each, and the total number that showed an increased or decreased risk of cancer was 72%. So 72% of available papers on these foods showed an increased or decreased risk of cancer. Basically what I'm getting at is the majority of foods, if you went to Google and Googled the name of a food and cancer risk next to it, the majority of foods you are going to find something which says it will either increase or decrease your risk of cancer. So what am I getting at? Am I saying that most foods will cause cancer or cure cancer? No I'm not. What I'm saying is that because the majority of, being food, of foods have been linked to cancer, most people should put this into perspective and calm down and not worry too much about the risk or not freak out about the risk without understanding the research at least. Now there's an extra part to this for people who want to understand this slightly more so. Um, I'm gonna, I'll try and keep it really brief. So when there's a research paper imagine it like a book. There's something called the abstract which is a little bit like the introduction to a book. It's a couple of paragraphs long usually. It's the brief summary um, then what you've got is the full text. That's the equivalent of reading the entire book and understanding it fully. Now what the researchers of this paper noticed was that if there was an increased or decreased risk of cancer, it was more likely to be published in the study abstract. So let's say you were, um, let's say you were publishing a research paper. Let's hypothetically say that there was some pressure on you to report some findings or perhaps exaggerate some findings where there wasn't that much to report. You would find a small risk or a small increased risk or, or decreased risk and you would publish it in the main abstract because that's where people are going to see it. But in the majority of cases where there were non-significant findings these were relegated to the full text. So basically when there is an increased or decreased risk of cancer is more likely to be shouted about. Whereas when something shows that there was, was no difference, you have to read the full text just to find it. So we're basically um, in an age or in an environment where if there is a link between a certain food and cancer, everyone is going to know about it. Whereas if a food is examined for its risk to, uh, link to cancer risk and there was no difference, it's whispered about very quietly and nobody hears about the story. So. The summary of this, the majority of foods out there are linked to cancer risk, the effects of which are described as implausibly large even when there's weak evidence to support this. Basically what I'm saying is don't freak out unless you understand the research in full because the majority of foods out there are linked to cancer in some way 
and the majority of research out there or a large majority of the research out there is blown way out of proportion because when you look at the meta-analysis for each food the reported um, effect shrinks considerably that's it i hope you found this useful please feel free to share it amongst your friends um, also please feel free to comment my facebook page is facebook.com forward slash ben carpenter personal training my twitter and instagram pages are both bdc carpenter and thank you for watching bye